It is I, Morpheus, or more accurately, Dark Morpheus. I'd like you to join me today while I talk about a subject that is quite fond of my heart, the ocean. So, I have some facts that I've located about it, and uh, hopefully you enjoy while you see the view of the waves crash and hear the sounds of it as well. And maybe you'll learn something new. So, let's get started. The ocean is home to nearly 95% of all life. There's a lot going on well below the surface. It's easy to forget that the oceans are teeming with life. In fact, 94% of life is aquatic. That's according to USA Science and Engineering Festival. That means those of us who live on land are part of a very, very small minority. Did you know that coral produces its own sunscreen? The overabundance of sunlight can damage the algae and the live inside coral, at least in the shallow water. To protect the algae, which are the main source of sustenance for the coral, the corals create proteins that act as a sort of sunscreen. That's pretty cool. There is enough gold in the ocean for each of us to have nine pounds of it. There's around 20 million tons of gold dispersed throughout the oceans. It is, however, diluted pretty much to a pulp. Concentration of it is only a few parts per trillion, according to the uh, National Ocean Service. The ocean floor also has undissolved gold embedded in it, but it's not cost effective to mine it. There are two, there are actually two, but um, the main point is there's a nice sheet larger than the continental U.S. Just two pieces of ice remain from our planet's last ice age. The Greenland ice sheet and the Antarctic ice sheet. The latter of the two is staggering in size clocking in at around 5.4 million square miles. According to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, it's roughly the size of the continental U.S. and Mexico combined. Sharks. Sharks are my favorite creature. They're my favorite animal. I'm using air quotes there because technically they fall into the fish category. Sharks have always been my favorite animal. Uh, they're just cool. So, and I'm not that kind of person who desires to be close to them because I dig them. You know, you won't see me diving in a cage or anything like that anytime soon. But I am fond of them. So, sharks have their own underwater cafe of sorts. As it turns out, humans aren't the only creatures in need of a winter vacation. In 2 scientists discovered an area in a remote part of the Pacific Ocean, partway between Baja California and Hawaii, where typically coastal great white sharks will migrate in the winter. Scientists named the spot White Shark Cafe. Some sharks hang around here, the entire, that area, for months before they head back to the warmer weather. Did you know <laughs> the planet's longest mountain range is underwater and is 10 times longer than the Andes? Longest mountain range above water is the Andes, which is about 4,300 miles long. The actual longest mountain range on Earth, however, is the Mid-Oceanic Ridge, which snakes between all continents, clocks in at around 40,000 
390 miles. That is pretty long. The Pacific is wider than the moon. At its widest point from Indonesia all the way to Colombia, the Pacific Ocean is wider than the moon. By quite a lot, actually. <laughs> the expanse of an ocean is 12,300 miles across, which is more than five times the diameter of the moon. That is pretty cool. I didn't know that until just now. That's awesome. One iceberg can supply a million people with drinking water for five years. There's a large iceberg from Antarctica that contains more than 20 billion gallons of water. That could conceivably supply one million people with drinking water for five years. A company in uh, United Arab is actually planning to begin towing icebergs from Antarctica to the coast for that very reason. A lot of people know this, but let's get into detail. Pressure at the bottom of the ocean would crush you <laughs> like an ant. In the Mariana Trench, 35,802 feet below the surface, which includes the deepest point on the planet, the water pressure is 8 tons per square inch. If you made your way down there, you'd feel like you were holding up. 50 jumbo jets. Water at the bottom of the ocean is incredibly hot. In the deepest parts of the ocean, the water temperature may only be 2 degrees to 4 degrees Celsius, with the exception of water coming out of the hydrothermal vents in the seafloor. The water released from these vents can be up to 400 degrees Celsius or 750 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the intense pressure at these depths, the same pressure that would crush you, that keeps the water from boiling. The planet's biggest waterfall is in the ocean. <laughs> I wonder how that works. The tallest waterfall you're going to see on land is Angel Falls in Venezuela has a drop of over 3,200 feet compared to the Denmark Strait Cataract, that's nothing. It's an underwater waterfall in between Greenland and Iceland, formed by the temperature difference in the water on either side of the strait. When the cold water from the east meets the warmer water from the west, it flows underneath the warm water. The drop of 11,000 500 feet. According to the National Ocean Service, the flow rate of the waterfall is more than 123 million cubic feet per second, which is 50,000 times that of Niagara Falls. The loudest ocean sound came from an ice quake. In 97, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, better known as NOAA, captured one of the loudest sounds ever recorded. They named it the Bloop. The sound was loud enough to be picked up by sensors over 3,000 miles away. Originally, researchers noted that the nature of the sound made it seem like it came from an animal, although no known animal exists that is large enough to even make that sound. After 15 years, the NOAA concluded that the noise came from an ice quake. Simply put, an ice quake is when seismic activities cause a break in frozen ground. However, many people still question this conclusion. It's a source of many conspiracy theories. More people been to the moon than to the Mariana Trench. In human history, one dozen people have set foot on the moon, but just three people have managed to make the journey to the Mariana Trench. 
one of those people, believe it or not, was Director James Cameron. Since you're on YouTube already, if you want to type, James Cameron goes to Mariana Trench. It's actually quite fascinating. He had a special vessel built. He was only on there for a very, very short amount of time because of the, you know, conditions being exceptionally dangerous. But it is fascinating that he is one of three to actually make that journey. So check it out. In fact, <laughs> in the effort of uh, education, I'll have a link to his journey in the description of the video. Half of the United States exists below the ocean. According to CBS News, more than half of the United States exists underwater. The borders of our country don't stop where the land ends. They expand 200 nautical miles away from shore. Oceans have lakes and rivers too. The ocean is an entirely separate world. There are trenches, mountains, volcanoes, and lakes and rivers. <laughs> the seawater makes its way through layers of salt and forms little depressions on the ocean floor. Because of the water around these depressions contains more salt than normal seawater, it's denser, and it sinks into the depressions, creating little briny pools. They're a lot like lakes we know. They have shorelines, some of them even have waves. I would very much like to see that. The Mediterranean used to be dry. It used to be a dry basin five million years ago or so. Water from the Atlantic poured through the Strait of Gibraltar and filled the basin. Theories abound as to how this happened, but one catastrophic interpretation has the basin filling up at least two years thanks to a massive torrent of water. Perhaps it was when Thor fought the Dark Elves. <laughs> or something like that, who knows. But uh, the event was called the Zanclean Flood. The ocean's canyons make the Grand Canyon seem small. Notice in a trend here, most of the stuff on land that seems pretty big is much bigger underwater. So the ocean is like the underwater Texas, I guess. The ocean's canyons, uh, not to take anything away from the Grand Canyon on Earth, but the uh, Zimcha Canyon located in the Bering Sea, has a vertical relief of 8,520 feet, almost 2,500 feet deeper than the Grand Canyon. Sea ice is drinkable. You can't drink seawater, but you can drink sea ice. However, you don't want to drink fresh sea ice, which still has pockets of brine trapped in between ice crystals. As the ice ages, the brine dries out, the ice becomes fresh enough that, according to the NSIDC, it can be melted and consumed. So, <laughs> this is interesting. There's an internet connection in the ocean. <laughs> so there's Wi-Fi everywhere now. For the past few decades, according to the Ocean Pacific Economic Cooperation, submarine cables buried deep within the ocean have carried more than 97% of intercontinental data traffic, meaning that overseas communication is made possible by ocean-based cables. Ironically, most of the Earth's volcanic activity happens in the ocean. Well, maybe it's not ironic, but I think it's interesting. When it comes to volcanic activity, the oceans have the most going on by a wide margin. In fact, 90% of all volcanic activity on the planet happens in the ocean. The largest known concentration of active volcanoes is in the South Pacific. It's an area no bigger than the size of New York, but it contains a whopping 1,133 volcanoes. Tsunamis move at 500 miles per hour. 
Tsunamis are triggered by seismic events and can, according to NOAA's Pacific Tsunami Warming Center, move across the ocean at speeds of 500 miles per hour. When the ocean's depth is 3.7 miles, these waves are usually unnoticed as they are only a few inches above the surface. And as the waves move toward land and the depths shrink, they pick up water and increase in above surface size. <laughs> Thankfully, they slow down. Thanks to the ocean, most of our planet is dark. Oceans have an average depth of about 12,100 feet. Because light waves can only penetrate 330 feet of water, everything below that point is dark. Seeing as water makes up most of the planet, <laughs> that means most of the Earth exists in absolute darkness all the time. The United States lost a hydrogen bomb in the ocean. <laughs> Oh God, every year shipping containers get lost in the ocean and oil spares are unfortunately common. But in 1966, somehow the United States managed to lose a hydrogen bomb at sea. Luckily, according to history, it was eventually found with the help of a Spanish fisherman. Oh, okay, so they found it. <laughs> Yikes. The world's largest living structure is in the ocean. The largest living structure isn't an enormous copse of trees or even a mass of fungus. It's the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. The reef spreads over 133,000 square miles. It's so huge it can actually be seen from space. There are around 3 million shipwrecks in the ocean. From the Titanic to Christopher Columbus, Santa Maria, oceans are home to around 3 million shipwrecks. According to the United States, or excuse me, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. The ocean has more artifacts than all the world's museums combined. Makes sense if there's that many shipwrecks. The ocean, let's see, thanks to the millions of shipwrecks, <laughs> the ocean houses countless treasures and artifacts. National Geographic estimates that there are more treasures on the bottom of the ocean than in all the world's museums combined. If all the ice melted, the sea level would rise 26 stories. According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, if all the glaciers and sheets of Arctic sea ice melted at the same time, the sea level would rise an estimated 262 feet, which is about the height of a 26-story building. It'd be a little bit shorter than the Statue of Liberty. The ocean is a magnet for heat. The ocean is technically the largest solar energy collector on Earth. According, once again, to the NOAA, the proliferation of greenhouse gases prevents heat from escaping our planet's atmosphere. And all that energy has to go somewhere. Unfortunately, it goes straight into the oceans. As a result, ocean temperatures have rapidly risen over the past few decades. The ocean, not trees, but the ocean, it's our greatest source of oxygen. Most of the oxygen in our atmosphere comes from tiny marine plants in the ocean. Phytoplankton, kelp, and algae plankton, specifically. Scientists estimate they're responsible for around 70% of the atmosphere's oxygen. The biggest ocean waves are beneath its surface. The biggest ocean waves are not the ones that you can see from the shoreline. As a physical oceanographer, a scientist by the name of Kim Martini told Deep Sea News, the largest waves that occur in the ocean 
are called internal waves. They take place between two fluids with two different densities. As these internal waves travel for thousands of miles, they can grow to 650 feet tall. Let's see. Well, I think we got two to go, guys. We have better maps of Mars than of the ocean. Less than 5% of the ocean has been explored. According to the National Ocean Service, in fact, we have better maps of Mars than of the oceans, despite the fact that it's nearly 50 million miles away. More than 90% of the planet's life forms are undiscovered and underwater. Because precious little of the oceans has been explored, it's currently estimated that 91% of the species that exist under the sea have yet to be discovered. And last but not least, for this video at least, nearly 100% of Earth's living space is the ocean. The ocean makes up almost all of the living space on Earth. This makes the world's oceans the largest spaces in the known universe inhabited by living organisms. And for that awe-inspiring facts about the planet, come back and see Morpheus again. <laughs> no, um, if you guys did like this, um, I'll be doing more videos like this formatted about facts about things that I find of interest space things like that so if you want part two to the ocean facts or underwater facts in general just leave it in the comments or you know shoot me a message i'm always open to anything uh got some more traditional role plays coming but until then sweet dreams everybody